one of the things that really excites us about hi-fi these days is just how easy it is to get access to high-res music it used to be a right pain you had to buy your own server buy the music worry about storage but these days with Tidal, with CodeBuzz, it's never been easier to have all your favorite tracks in super high-res quality. And one of the most cost-effective ways of being able to play back your high-res music is the new Blue Sound Power Node 2021 edition. So what we thought we'd do is we'd open one up, take a deep dive into the setup from scratch, just so you can get your one onto your network without any hassles. Of course, what you'll need first is a Blue Sound Power node. You'll also need a selection of cables, including power, speaker, and HDMI if you're planning to use it, as well as a CAT cable if you're planning to use a wired connection. The cables we've chosen here today are the Nordos Blue Heaven speaker and power cables. It's a great addition to the Blue Sound Power node to improve its performance. And there's also the optional Ethernet and HDMI cable. The speakers we've chosen to run with today is the KEF L50 Meta, which again, with the Blue Sound Power node, makes a fantastic system. One of the brilliant features about the Blue Sound Power Node is that it has a dedicated subwoofer out, meaning that if you're like us and you're lucky, you have a KC62 subwoofer to be able to pair with your LS50 motors. Right, now that you've got all that stuff together and you've got all your cables, we can now get to connecting. The first thing you'll want to do is remove the banana post protectors from the back of the speaker binding posts. Most of the time you can do this with a fingernail, but in case you can't, a small flathead screwdriver will do the job nicely. If you're using a hardwired Ethernet connection from your router, you want to now plug this into the network port in the back of the Blue Sound. Also, if you're going to be using HDMI ARC from the back of your TV, you can now plug this into the Blue Sound node as well. Okay, at this point, we want to now look at our speaker cable. Now, any decent speaker cable worth its weight will have a directionality associated to it. You'll find that there's markings on the speaker cable that show you which end is the amp end and which end is the speaker end. In the case of the Nordos Blue Heaven, it's quite clearly marked in the direction of the arrow, the arrow being the speaker cable end and the non-arrow being the amp end. You want to go ahead now and take your amp end of the speaker cable and plug it into the outputs. Make sure you follow the red and black. This is now done for the right channel of your system and you want to repeat this now for the left channel. We'll be showing you the other end for the speaker connection in a second. Now there's a few more cables that you want to look at and there are a couple of supplied dongles inside the Blue Sound box for optical and analog. We're not using that in this scenario. What we will connect up though is the KC62 subwoofer. So you now want to take your subwoofer cable and connect it into the subwoofer output of the Blue Sound power node. At this point, you can now go ahead and get your power cable and plug this in. I should stress that it's a good idea to do this step last. It's generally not a good idea to power things on until you've got your connections all sorted, just for safety's sake. A few more connections to do. So this is now the back of the speaker. You'll remember the speaker end of the speaker cable, which can go ahead and go into the KEF L50 meta. Make sure you follow red for positive and black for negative. Now the very last thing in our system is the KEF KC62 subwoofer. We're going to get the other end of the subwoofer cable and plug it into the LFE input on the KC62 as well as power. Now there are a whole heap of settings and configurations for the KC62 which we can cover in a different video. We're focusing on the blue sound today. Now a quick note about wired versus Wi-Fi operation. As with all network-based devices, any network engineer, any audiophile will tell you it's always better if you have a wired connection directly to your router. Less problems, less interference, less chance of things dropping out. However, in the case where you are going to set up a unit on Wi-Fi, when you first power on the Blue Sound, it will go automatically into Wi-Fi setup mode. If you ignore this and then just go ahead and plug in the Ethernet cable, it will skip the Wi-Fi setup process and you'll go straight into a hardwired Ethernet connection. Once it's on the network, you'll see that the green light turns to blue. If you then decide, no, actually, I'm going to connect it up via Wi-Fi and you unplug the Blue Sound unit, the Blue Sound unit won't go back into Wi-Fi startup mode. It will instead turn to purple. And this is the status of the light that says that the Blue Sound is looking for its last known connection. Therefore, if you want to go and set it up via Wi-Fi, you'll have to unplug the unit, wait for five seconds, and then you can plug the unit back in again, let the unit boot up, and it'll boot up back into the Wi-Fi setup mode, and then you can begin the Wi-Fi process. You'll know that it's in Wi-Fi setup mode, ready to go, when the status light turns from red 
to a solid green. Alright, now that we've got everything plugged in, the unit's now in Wi-Fi setup mode, we can go ahead, open up the application, and get started. Now it's worth mentioning that we're using an iPad here today, the process will be exactly the same if you're using an iPhone. Android will be a little bit different, uh, there's a couple more steps you need to follow to connect to the power nodes Wi-Fi before putting in the details, but it's fairly straightforward. It's even more straightforward using AirPlay setup, which is what we're using here. So uh, the application automatically de detects that there is a device waiting to be set up. All you have to do is tap it. It will then gather some information about Wi-Fi networks that are around the power node. And using the joy of AirPlay, um, you basically just send the Wi-Fi SSID and password straight to the device without having to enter anything. At this point, all you need to do is just hit next and just wait for it to be onboarded to your Wi-Fi network. Whether you're using Android or Apple, it really is a straightforward process. It's a lot easier than it used to be. Once it's on the network, you'll see that it will download a mandatory update. Uh, the status light will flash from red to green whilst it performs this upgrade. Uh, this won't take that long, maybe three or four minutes. We've sped it up for the process of this video, but it won't take long at all. And that's it. If you did nothing else, you would have a functioning streamer on your network. You can see the streamer that we just set up on our network in the groups menu. This is also where you can group zones for party mode. One of the things I mentioned earlier was just how easy Blue Sound is to use and how easy it is to access high res music. Tidal is natively supported, including MQA and all the masters tracks that are available on Tidal. And it really is as simple as browsing and choosing the song you want to play. The integration of Tidal with Blue Sound is one of the best that we've seen. It's all definitely one of the most user-friendly. If you're not a Tidal person, that's perfectly fine. Blue Sound's got you covered. It's, it supports Spotify Connect, Cobuzz, Airplay, Rune, and a whole heap of other streaming services. Now we won't go over every setting that's available on Blue Sound. Frankly, the manual, all the instruction guides from Blue Sound are fantastic. But I do want to cover a couple of things that are our favorite bits. Uh, the presets function is amazing. There are five presets available on the Blue Sound Power node, and the five buttons are assignable to virtually anything on the Blue Sound. It means that you can assign the unit to uh, analog or optical input, you can assign it to Bluetooth, you can assign it to HDMI ARC, you can set a playlist to a particular button. And what this means is that you can just get the Blue Sound going without having to pull out your phone. It's a really great use case for having a Blue Sound Power node on your desk, in the kitchen, on the counter there. Without having to actually pull out your phone, you can get music going straight away. I have a device that I want to pair to a Bluetooth and I want to switch the, the Bluetooth input just with a touch. I can assign this to say, input preset 3 and so whenever I press the third preset button, it will switch straight to Bluetooth. Uh, another cool thing is that you can assign playlists, as mentioned, even title playlists. So I can now assign a title playlist not, uh, that we call ACA Demo to preset number four, which means that whenever I press preset number four, it will start playing whatever is on that playlist. It really is a very small, it seems, but in terms of day to day use, it, this is one of our favorite features. So you can imagine that this is your Blue Zone unit on your kitchen. I've assigned playlist to number four. After pressing that button, waiting a few seconds, it'll start playing some music. Time is so old and love so brief. Given that we're audio people, another one of our settings that we love to go into is the audio menu. To access this, just press the hamburger menu, press settings, go to audio, and you'll be presented with a whole heap of audio controls. Here, you'll be able to adjust the treble, the bass. You'll also be able to turn on or turn off the sub as well as the subwoofer crossover. Um, this is particularly helpful for when you are choosing what sub you want to use because you can, you can tailor the sub for the blue sound. You can also set volume limits. This is particularly helpful for areas where you don't want the system to go too loud or you're scared about damaging the speaker by excess volume. Now, if you've gone through the Wi-Fi setup and then you decide that you actually want to connect it via cable, this is fine. You just plug it in and the Blue Sound unit will obtain a new IP address over the wired connection. If, however, you don't do the Wi-Fi setup process, you connect it via Ethernet 
then for some reason the Ethernet connection drops out, it won't come back online, which is why we always advise, even if you are running the Ethernet connection, run the Wi-Fi setup first, just as a backup, because then the unit, as you can see here, will automatically reconnect even though the Ethernet cable is not plugged in. It's just best practice and it gives you a backup in case something happens to your wired connection. So that's it. We've now got the unit online and we're playing music through our KEF LS50 and KZ62 system. So that's how you do it yourself. Of course, if you have any issues, you just have to call us and we're more than happy to, to walk you through the steps. Hope to see you in store soon and follow us and subscribe for more of these kind of videos. Thank you.